nine siblings, five brothers and four sisters. Is there any doubt where Sheila honed her leadership skills? <laughs> Robert Fulgham wrote a book in the 80s called All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. I think all Sheila needed to know she learned growing up in her large Irish Catholic family. Manager, listener, servant leader, strategic planner, Asserter, commander, affirmer, administrator, arbitrator, persuader, supervisor, team player, consensus builder, supporter, humor provider, Controller, tutor, mentor, and perhaps even a little ringleader and coercer. <laughs> Aren't we lucky to have Sheila using these skills along with her faith for the betterment of our community? And it all started with her large Irish Catholic family and nine siblings. We are pleased to present the 2008 Iverson Frecking Award to Sheila Garrity. Of what I learned um, about life. I learned waiting in line to use the bathroom. We were a <laughs> great big family, one bathroom. Uh, special thanks to Tom Rand, Gail Brussel, the board of Bethany St. Joseph, and Mr. Don Iverson. I'm thrilled and honored to accept the Bethany St. Joseph Iverson Frecking Award for 2008. I'm certainly flattered to find myself in the company of these two remarkable women, Sister Marlene and Bishop April, as well as to join the really amazing people who have received this award in past years. Wow. I'm grateful that so many members of my family, friends, co-workers, Community Foundation board members are here. Um, I'm also grateful to have known so many supportive people who are here in spirit. For over 22 years, I enjoyed the gift of a wonderful husband with whom I raised three entertaining, generous young adults <laughs> who are leading productive lives of their own in school and public service. At the La Crosse Community Foundation, we get to see the great generosity of individuals and families in this community who do so much more uh, than just give money to projects. These people are invested in great works of charity and ministry in our community, and you would be amazed to hear their stories. La Crosse is full of caring, loving people, many of whom are here today. This room is filled with reverence. So many of you fight the good fight. You are the ones who lead and support organizations that make life manageable for those who are marginalized. And you deserve to be recognized for your efforts. Thank you. Recently, I was struck by a statement uh, from Father Helmut Rakowski, a Capuchin, who wrote on World Poverty Franciscan Reflections, and he commented on the disparate wealth that exists in our country today. Uh, he cited Forbes billionaire list, excuse me, in the world. The Forbes billionaire list has 793 billionaires. Well, this was shocking. It was really his conclusion that struck me the most. He said, the antidote of poverty is not wealth. The true wealth of the poor is the poor themselves. If the poor collaborate, then we have obtained a great deal. And if we relate the rich with the poor, and the poor with everyone else, and everyone else in turn with God, we will achieve much more than just handing out money. He concludes by saying, the future is built upon community. For us today, I'd suggest that our future community can be built on solidarity with those among us who suffer. 
those young and old who feel alone and hungry, who feel abandoned by their fellow brothers and sisters, those who may be struggling with challenges posed by cultural differences, sexual orientation, or transgender issues, those who live in cold homes or polluted slums around cities that have exported U.S. manufacturing, those who are incarcerated and feel forgotten, people who may have a little voice in the justice system who, who feel that the justice system is stacked against them. These are the mother, fathers, brothers, sisters, friends, and neighbors of many of us. And working to help alleviate some of their suffering is a noble goal for all community leaders. Additionally, those who suffer are brothers and sisters who live with a diagnosable mental disorder. They represent nearly 26% of adults, or 58 million people. For people ages 15 to 44, mental disorders are the leading cause of disability, accounting for 30,000 suicides and 650,000 suicide attempts each year. In La Crosse County alone, there were 13 reported suicides last year, plus another 23 deaths involving alcohol or drugs, where the death can be directly connected to the use or abuse of alcohol or drugs. This kind of suffering is something I know that touches many of our lives. For too many people with a mental illness, there is no health insurance coverage for their disorder. Insurance coverage limits for conditions such as eating disorders, depression, dementia, bipolar, and schizophrenia actually eliminates access to care for people who need it and people who can benefit from it. Mental illnesses are common and treatable. Depression affects 6 million Americans annually. We need insurance parity to cover mental health, drug, and alcohol treatment equal to, not less than, coverage for other kinds of illnesses. Insurance parity is something we must all fight for. Otherwise, we cannot be surprised when a young person overdoses on alcohol and falls in the river, or when someone far removed from reality, armed with a weapon, enters a shopping mall and begins shooting. Mental health parity is an urgent need for any community that believes it cares about its youth, the aged, the poor, and the addicted. It is encouraging to hear that on February 20th, a group of La Crosse area residents are going to go to Madison um, to meet with elected officials to talk about how mental illness affects their families. These are real people who will meet with um, representatives in Madison to lobby for insurance parity. Jennifer Schilling is a co-sponsor of legislation calling for insurance parity in Wisconsin. And if Jennifer were here, we would thank her. But if you see her on the street, please thank her. I would like to share this great honor, the Iverson Frecking Award, in solidarity with the families and caregivers of those who suffer. It may be the teacher or principal who comforts the tormented student. It may be the widow who struggles to adjust to a new life. It may be the sister or priest who invites the marginalized into their faith community, or the attorney who takes a pro bono case, or the volunteer at St. Clair Health Mission. It is certainly those who are the parents, siblings, and children of the individual who lives daily with mental illness, addiction, or who may be incarcerated with such a disability. You are the ones who are doing the work of God. It is because of your love that the daily lives of your students, neighbors, and loved ones becomes more manageable. In closing and in solidarity with those who suffer, I read from Luke. And raising his eyes, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude and insult you. Rejoice and leave for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. Many thanks.